Hello, my name is Roy Shalem, and I would like to tell you how your IBS or IBSD can be cured with new advancements in medicine, research, and lab technology. In early 2017, I developed IBS symptoms. I visited several doctors and went through an extensive set of medical exams and labs. The doctors were unable to find a cause for my symptoms, and in 2018, I was diagnosed with IBS. After much self-guided research and effort, I was able to uncover what was really causing my symptoms, and with medication, I was able to cure my misdiagnosed IBS. Today, I am symptom-free and completely cured. Over the past three years, I underwent many tests and labs to try to uncover the cause of my IBS symptoms. Throughout the whole experience, I believed that my symptoms were due to an underlying infection. When the doctors could not find an infection, they diagnosed the symptoms as IBS. Since I did not believe IBS was in any way a psychological problem, I asked repeatedly what is functionally different in a patient who has IBS than a healthy, healthy person? And they had no answer. This led me to believe that there was something we were not uncovering. I would like to go over the medical research I found, which might be the information you need to cure your IBS. I will also tell you which labs you need to ask your physician to prescribe and the reason these labs might find what is truly causing your IBS symptoms. Then, I will detail the exact infections I had which once discovered and treated cured my IBS. Before I go on, I need to disclose that I am not a doctor or a medical professional and have no medical training or education. I am a person just like you who developed IBS symptoms and was looking for and found a medical cure for my condition. In this video, I will go over the laboratory technology which has been developed which might find your hidden infection. The medical research paper I uncovered which details why you might have an infection which has not been diagnosed by your physician to date. The medical misconception which may be causing your symptoms to be misdiagnosed as IBS rather than an infection, and the labs you will want to ask your physician to prescribe in order to find the true cause of your symptoms, which will hopefully lead to you being cured. Let's begin by talking about the laboratory technology which has been developed which might find your hidden infection and the medical research paper I uncovered which details why you might have an infection which has not been diagnosed by your physician to date. There are currently two kinds of labs that detect, detect bacteria in your body. The traditional method, which has been used for years, is the bacterial culture test, and the new method, which has been developed, is the bacterial PCR DNA test. PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction. It is a method widely used in molecular biology to make several copies of a specific DNA segment. Using PCR copies of DNA sequence are exponentially amplified to generate thousands to millions more copies of that particular DNA segment. Both tests can detect the presence of pathogenic bacteria, parasites, amoeba, or viruses. For this talk, we will focus on their ability to detect pathogenic bacteria. The tests have pros and cons just like anything else. The main drawback of the PCR DNA test is that it will not provide a bacterial count. It will only inform you whether the bacteria is present in your body or not. Some physicians will not prescribe this test, claiming that it is too sensitive and may report false positives. However, the main benefit of the PCR DNA test is that it can identify non-dividing bacteria that is present in your system, 
which cannot be detected by the bacterial culture lab. So the test might not be too sensitive after all. In 2018, I took a culture test for bacteria and other pathogens, which came back negative. I was able to get my GI to prescribe the new PCR DNA test for bacteria and other pathogens. The test came back positive for bacteria. I took a course of targeted antibiotics and went back to my GI. When it came time to test to see if the antibiotic medication treated the bacterial infection, the GI recommended the culture bacteria test. I asked him if we could perform both the culture test and the PCR DNA test, and he agreed. The culture test for bacteria came back negative, but the PCR DNA test came back positive. It was at this time that I started to research how this could happen. And after some time, I came across the following research paper from the 2014 FEMS Microbiology Letters on the matter. The title of the paper is Detecting the Presence of Bacterial DNA by PCR can be useful in diagnosing culture negative cases of infection, especially in patients which suspected infection and antibiotic therapy. This is from the abstract of the FEMS Microbiology Letter 2014. In summary, what this paper finds is that a patient with a bacterial infection who has taken a course of antibiotics could still have the infection present but due to the bacteria now having non-dividing cells, the bacteria will not show up in a culture test. This is why a PCR DNA test is needed. I then took another course of targeted antibiotics, and this time, when I took another PCR DNA test, the results came back negative to all bacterial strains and pathogens. However, my IBS was not cured, and I remained symptomatic. Allow me to shift focus to the medical misconception which may be causing your symptoms to be misdiagnosed as IBS, rather than an infection. At that time, I knew I no longer had a bacterial infection or any other pathogen tested for by the PCR DNA test. So what could be causing my IBS? I spent countless nights researching for other possible pathogens, and I came across an institution in Phoenix, Arizona that was treating patients with IBS. In some of their findings, they had patients who had fungal yeast infections, which were causing their patients' IBS symptoms. Once the fungal yeast infections were treated, the patients had been effectively cured. I went to my GI and asked him if we had tested for a fungal yeast infection, and he said no, we had not. I inquired as to why we hadn't, and here is where I learned of the medical misconception. The medical community sees fungal yeast as opportunistic, meaning they are non-aggressive. Our bodies should be able to fight off these infections easily, and they do, every day. When we began testing to find what might be causing my IBS, my doctor prescribed labs for HIV, reduced white blood cell count, and diabetes. All these tests came back negative. It was also determined that I did not have cancer. The medical community believes that only if you are immune compromised can the fungal yeast colonize, and if you are not, then your immune system should be able to fight off the infection. I also saw another doctor who was an infectious disease specialist when I told him my belief that I had a fungal yeast infection which is causing my IBS symptoms. He also assured me that I should not have one as my labs concluded I did not have HIV, a low white blood cell count, diabetes, or cancer. So I asked my GP to prescribe a fungal yeast culture, which he agreed to do, and the test came back positive for Candida zoilinoides. 
after taking a course of fluconazole antifungal. The fungal yeast infection was not cured. My physician then prescribed a course of itraconazole antifungal. This time, the fungal yeast infection was effectively treated and my IBS was cured. I do believe that these fungal yeasts are opportunistic by nature, as the medical community believes, and non-aggressive. But what if you have a bacterial infection that compromises your immune system? This might lend an opportunity for these fungal yeasts to colonize in your body and cause IBS symptoms. The misconception the medical community seems to have is that they test a patient for HIV, low white blood cell count, cancer, autoimmune disease, or diabetes, and the results are negative, then the patient is considered not immune compromised and therefore will not have a fungal yeast infection, so they don't test for it. I do not have any of those diseases and never did, but I had a fungal yeast infection, and when it was cured, my IBS went away, and I am now symptom-free. Now, let's discuss the labs we want to ask your physician to prescribe in order to find the true cause of your symptoms. You will want to ask your GI to prescribe the following three labs. One, a stool sample spectrum culture for fungal and yeast. Two, an oral sample spectrum culture for fungal and yeast. And three, a stool sample spectrum pathogen PCR DNA test for pathogenic bacteria, parasites, amoeba, or viruses. The reason you want the three labs I just mentioned is that test one and two can detect a fungal yeast infection which may have colonized in your upper or lower GI tract. Test 3 may uncover a non-dividing bacterial infection which is colonized in your GI tract. Any of these pathogens can be what's causing your IBS symptoms and when treated could be the cure you have been searching for. Once all of my bacterial and fungal yeast infections were successfully treated, it still took time for me to be non-symptomatic. This is because our digestive symptoms contain both good and bad bacteria. We have a digestive bacteria which is essential to our digestion of food. When we take a course of antibiotics and antifungal medication, it kills the good fungus and bacteria in your digestive system as well as the bad. Therefore, after the pathogens were treated in my system, it took me four months to rebuild the good bacteria in my digestive tract. There was also extensive damage to my digestive system from the pathogenic bacteria and fungus, which needed additional time to heal. I have been told it could take up to a year to heal and rebuild your gut microbiome. I am looking forward to producing the next video, which will detail what a patient will need to do in order to rebuild and heal the digestive system after treating IBS with antifungal medication and antibiotics. IBS affects between 25 and 45 million people in the United States. When I shared my story with my community, I found there were several of my friends suffering from IBS symptoms, which was unbeknownst to me. It may be that your friends and family might have IBS symptoms as well, and this information could be very useful to them. So please, share this with everyone you know and in the hopes you can help someone you care about find the cure. Thank you for your time and be sure to leave a comment if this was helpful in returning you back to health.